Hey, what's up guys? Gary G back again with another video. And today we're gonna to talk all about gravity feeding your water tank in your trailer or your van. The frequently asked questions, do I lose pressure? How high does it have to be up? Is it gonna cause problems with my pressure washer? All in today's video, stay tuned, let's go. So I got my 1800 uh, PSI 1.2 GPM Ryobi. I know, I know, I know, it's an entry level pressure washer, I get it, but this is one of the best pressure washers for washing cars. Remember, we don't need very much PSI to wash cars. In fact, we shouldn't have it. We shouldn't really have anything more than about 1200 PSI. The most important thing when it comes to doing this is uh, making sure that we have enough GPM. You know, we want to get as close to that 1.5 to 2 uh, GPM as we can, and be somewhere around uh, 1,050 to 1,200 PSI, 1,500 max. Um, and this thing does that. So what I have here is, I got my pressure washer. My tank is behind the wall. I'll show you that. I got a 90 gallon tank, and it's got a tube coming from the bottom of the tank directly into the pressure washer here on this side. And what we have is the bottom of the tank is level with the pressure washer. When you gravity feed, it needs to be either level or it needs to be above. Okay guys, so here we're inside my trailer. This is on the top of the tank. This is back here where we are uh, just at right now. And this right here is a 90 gallon water tank. So if you see, I got it strapped down to these four by sixes. And the reason I did that was to raise the level up. So it would be level, you see the valve back here that it would be level with the pressure washer once the pressure goes in. So, so on the back here, we got the valve. There's a shutoff valve I have turned off right now. And the water is gravity fed into the pressure washer. Okay, so you might be asking, what is gravity fed? Basically what it means is the weight of the water is going to be pushing it down and rushing it into your pressure washer. The same kind of science that would be for like a water tower in a city. The idea of raising water up and allowing the weight and the gravity to push it through the tube. So a question I get all the time is, do you lose pressure? Short answer, yes, you do, but it's very minimal. And there's also ways to tweak that. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, now so that you saw that, what you got going on here is, here's the pressure washer. You see I've taken off the hose and I hooked up a garden hose. Excuse the mess in here. The garden hose is going out. So hooking up a garden hose to this is going to simulate what it would be like to have a natural pump. And what that means is I've got water that's pushing its way with pressure into the pressure washer. So naturally, the pressure washer is not gonna have to work as hard to produce pressure. So you're gonna get higher pressure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up a pressure gauge to this pressure washer. I'm gonna show you what I'm getting with two different tips, with two different orifice sizes, while it's hooked up to a garden hose and then when it's gravity fit. Okay, so right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start doing the testing. We're gonna be looking at these two different tips. This is a 25 degree, this is a 15 degree. This one has a 1.7 orifice. Okay, so a smaller orifice than this, this has a 2.0. And the way that you check that out usually is by looking at the numbers right here. This says 15, so 15 degrees, 0, 1, 7. So that's a 1.7 orifice. And on this one, it's a lot easier to see. This is a 25 degree. 0, 2.0, so this is a 2.0 orifice, so we should get a little bit less pressure with this, but higher GPM. So I've got this pressure regulator set up. I'm gonna go ahead and put this yellow tip right here, and we're gonna show you what we're getting with the yellow tip. Let's go. So we got about 1600 PSI with this 1.7. I believe this unit comes with a 1.5. I believe what it is, that's how they achieve the 1800 PSI. But anyways, that's a 1.7. This is the 2.0. Let's go ahead and check this one out now too. So about 1300 PSI. So we lost 300 PSI, but the GPM goes up. So this is my preferred size, the 2.0, I'm getting about uh, 1300. Um, and I think I'm getting close to 1.4 GPM, 1.3. I'd have to test that again, maybe in another video. But this is my preference for gravity fed or for uh, through a garden hose. So now we're gonna switch it over to doing gravity fed and you're gonna see there is a loss 
but it's not much. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and use the yellow tip. Remember 1.7 orifice. We got 1600 before. Let's see if we get a drop. We usually do. Let's go ahead and see what we get. Not bad, not bad at all. I'm impressed actually. Usually there's a drop. So we got pretty close to 1600 uh, gravity fed and with the garden hose. That's impressive. Last time I tested this, I got a loss. So regardless, we got 1600 PSI. Okay, now gravity fed with the green tip. Remember this is the 2.0, so we're gonna have a loss of PSI, but we're gonna get an improvement in GPM. Let's go ahead and test this out. I believe this one, was close to 1300 before. So let's see what we get now. Yeah, so about a 250 loss. So we're getting about 1050 PSI. This is actually perfect for me. The 1050 PSI um, close to 1.34, 1.5-ish. Uh, gallons per minute is perfect for me. This is what I look for. I'll actually make a video talking about how you can manipulate pressure in your pressure washer just by going to different orifice sizes for different jobs. But in this case, you see that uh, you do have a minimal loss. Um, it looks like with the smaller orifice size, we didn't actually lose any PSI when it went to gravity fed, but with this bigger orifice size, we lost about 250 PSI. I'm very happy with these numbers. Uh, hopefully this explains a little bit of the difference between gravity fed, what to expect when you don't have a pump. All right, so I hope that was helpful for you. That was just a demonstration of what it means to be gravity fed. It's pretty simple, it's a lot easier than I thought it was. I am now going with gravity fed. Um, I am gonna get a loss in pressure a little bit, but like I said, it's about the 1050 mark as far as PSI and the GPM is kind of where I want it to be. Remember when you're washing cars, you don't need that much PSI. In fact, it's bad to have high PSI. So I would recommend not going any higher than about 1500 max, but somewhere around the 1200 to 1000 range is a really good range to be at. All right guys, well thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for coming back to another video. If you have any questions or anything, make sure to leave it in the comments. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video so it gets out to more people. I know there's a lot of people that are curious about gravity fed pressure washing when it comes to detailing or other pressure washing businesses. And I hope that I explained uh, everything that encompasses gravity feeding. If there was anything that I didn't say that I missed, you can leave it in the comments down below. I'll make sure to answer back to most of the comments. Thank you guys again, for coming along for another video. I appreciate you guys, my Stay Slick fam. Thank you guys for coming back. I'll see you on the next one, okay? Peace out, stay slick.